everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you my top tip for PhDs and that is how to read a paper. This is a definitely underrated skill that has taken me a long time to master and I definitely still haven't mastered it. I just wanted to share my framework for how I go about reading papers and taking notes with it. So let's get stuck in. So let's start with a brief introduction, like why do you even need to bother reading papers? My mentor told me uh, the other week that it is the single most important skill you learn as a PhD student because how are you ever going to build a career as a researcher or like do any experiments or do anything like that if you can't read papers? The whole point of reading papers is so that we know what's going on in the field currently so we can figure out what we can add, what we can learn from it and to be honest, what hasn't worked and what we shouldn't do. So reading papers is key. So stage one is to figure out why you're actually reading the paper in the first place. Like it's pointless just reading this paper if you don't really know what information you're trying to get out of it. Are you looking for a protocol? Are you looking for a conclusion? Are you looking for something to support what you're doing? Something to disagree with what you're doing? I think the key point of reading papers is number one, read with purpose. If you don't have a purpose, then you're just gonna end up skimming through this paper, not really knowing whether it's important for you or not, but taking notes anyway. And that's a waste of your time and future to use time because you're going to go back and be like why did I do this so stage one definitely figure out why you are reading your paper in the first place so the second stage of reading your paper is to do a little skim read and figure out whether it's actually relevant so what I do is I tend to read the abstract obviously this is kind of cheating I don't know if this is right or not but this is what I do I kind of read like the first maybe paragraph of the introduction if that but I'll read it quickly like I will really skim through it and if it's not giving me what I want then it goes out um, and then I'll read the a little bit of the discussion again I'll skim read it and try and pick out why I'm reading the paper like does it have the information I need is it going to be relevant sometimes I can chuck them out of the abstract stage sometimes I'll chuck them out of the introduction stage or sometimes I'll chuck them out of the discussion stage I also do have a little look at the figures as well because that's kind of helpful sometimes they can be a bit confusing um so yeah as a general rule of thumb when you're first skimming a paper I'd say abstract intro discussion briefly if it does meet your standards then I would save that paper to your referencing manager of choice and we will come back to that later if it doesn't fit your needs then chuck it out and go back to your literature search another thing for figuring out which papers are relevant if you actually can't be bothered to read do the skim read the skim read doesn't take very long but skim reading is definitely a skill um so it can like yeah you pick it up over time just like practice it another thing that i would do is use the uh, find tool genuinely just do like a little search like a little control f and find the keywords that you're looking for if the keywords aren't in there then we don't need this paper or we can check it out if the keywords are in there then that's great then you have a read around the keywords figure out whether it's saying what you want it to say if it is fab if it's not again chuck it in the pile but remember to save all your papers i cannot stress this enough do not just keep tabs open save them whether it's downloading them printing them out but that's a waste of paper or saving them to a referencing manager saving them in a folder adding them to your favorites however you decide to save them for now save them because you will forget so now we have figured out whether our papers are relevant we've decided that they are yay well done we found some relevant papers we've had a read through and we know that they've got the information that we want we've saved them to our referencing manager because we always save our papers and now we're going to actually give them a real in-depth read so how do you do this i tend to use good notes on my ipad this is why I literally love my iPad because I'm not the kind of person, I say this every video I feel like, but I cannot stress it enough. I'm not the kind of person that can like open up a laptop and like read a paper and do like the little highlighty thing with your cursor. If that's you, then that's great. Like roll with that. Um, but for me personally, I'm not really that kind of person. So I have to either like print them out. So before I had an iPad, I would like print out the relevant documents first and keep them like a binder. But now that I have my iPad, I use GoodNotes and I basically save everything into like a folder and then I go through and highlight that way. So when I am reading, the way I absorb information is by like physically tracing over it with a highlighter. And um, so this is the style that works for me, obviously find a style that works for you, but having that kind of like pen literally going over the words really helps me like taking the information and absorb it. So if there's papers I'm reading in depth, I will highlight them. And I tend to have like a highlighting color code. So I'll split it into like background information, new findings, stuff that I want to look into a bit more, interesting methods or protocols, and each of those will be like a separate color. So it's really, really, really easy for me to like go back and see what information is relevant where. Um, if you watch my video on how to come up with research project ideas, then I talk about this in a bit more detail, so I won't go into it too much. I will link the video down below. So yeah, definitely check that out if you haven't already, because that's how I kind of keep track of all my papers and go from like them just being a paper to how I then spin them out into other research ideas and the color coding definitely comes in handy. I also try and annotate my papers as well so um what's super good is that some referencing tools have like nice built-in annotation tools so if you are reading them on a referencing manager like you can highlight them on there like using the app or whatever and then you can also annotate them as well so um using a little annotation tool they will pop up down the side which is kind of neat or if you're using good notes like i do like annotate them like write down any points
points, questions, anything like a bit of a brain dump um, for your papers. So that's what I tend to do in terms of that. At the end of reading a paper or while I'm reading a paper, to help me absorb the information a bit more, I will tend to have a kind of master notebook. So for example, let's say I've printed out my papers and I'm using a binder or I'm using my laptop or I'm highlighting them on my iPad. I would then have a separate notebook, which is often physical, but it can be also on your iPad or a Word document or something, where I would write the title of the paper and then I would try to write down like three to five main points from that paper. It has great protocol on how to make this buffer or proves that we can cure cancer. I don't know, something random, but like put that in your three to five points so that you know it's come from that paper. I, again, I tend to go back and highlight these main points in the same colours that I used to highlight before because it's a real nice point of reference if you are coming up with ideas or if you're writing a literature review and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I can't remember where that paper was from. You go back to that notebook and you write it down. A key lesson I learned here and I wish, wish, wish I'd known this sooner is that it really doesn't have to be a formal exercise. I think for a while I was kind of like, oh, I'll read the paper first or like I'm just skim reading this paper and I wasn't writing down information that I got from this paper. So that meant that because I was, because I was saving it. So I was like, oh, well, if it turns out to be important, then I'll start writing it in the notebooks. The notebooks all like nice and neat and stuff because I don't know how much space I'll need. Blah, 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 blah. That meant that I was forgetting a lot of important information from a lot of different papers. And before you knew it, I had like a million tabs open and I hadn't saved the papers and I got into a bit of a mess. Didn't know what references had come from where, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So number one lesson, this doesn't have to be a formal exercise. Let's say you are skim reading a paper and you haven't decided whether it's super relevant or not, but you've got like, like there's like a cool bit in it. Like maybe you won't read it whole, like properly, but there's a cool bit of information that you want to reference in there, like a, a fact. Um, then still write down the title of the paper in your notebook and write down that and save that paper. Even if you're not reading it properly and you're like, oh, I'll just reference like that one fact from there. It doesn't deserve to go in my big, super cool, fancy notebook of things. Still write it down. You could always go back to it. Make this notebook like a brain dump of ideas because then you have all your ideas in one place and you will not lose them. So once you have done all that and you've got your nice little notebook of ideas, then what I tend to do is write down references that they have referenced. Um, so I do actually, you know, when you're like reading a paper and it says, and then we did this as previously described by blah, and then they'll like reference something or they say something, but you're like, oh, actually like, I'd really like to see the original paper. Then I tend to write down at the bottom of my little summary, like the references, like the number citations or something that I then want to go back and read another time. And then I do exactly the same framework again and you start again. But that just means that I can kind of keep references in place. I can then get a lot more papers than I otherwise would have and then I kind of remember exactly what I have to do. So yeah, that is kind of my framework for how I tend to read papers. I know that everyone does them differently. Everyone kind of takes notes differently. And I know that what works for me might not necessarily work for you, but that is generally how I tend to go about reading papers. If it changes, I'll maybe do an update video for you. But yeah, it's worked for me so far. I just love having everything in one place and making sure I save your papers, save my papers, so I know exactly what information I've got from where. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that's been helpful and you've picked up some good tips. If you like this video, then please remember to subscribe and give it a like, give it a comment and yeah, let me know what you think and I'm excited to see you guys next week. Okay, bye!